The Mazda CX-5 has always been the crossover SUV that I've, whoa, slippery. It's always been the crossover SUV that I've recommended to people who are looking for a vehicle of this size. But it's been around since 2017. Now in that time, it did get a new turbocharged engine and for 2021, it gets a new infotainment system. But since then, a whole slew of new and updated crossovers have come to the market, like the Nissan Rogue. For 2021, it's a completely new vehicle. So how does this old dog stack up against the new kid on the block? Well, why don't we go for a drive and try and find out. Kicking things off with the Mazda CX-5, it is available with two engine options. The base engine is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. This engine produces 187 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque. It's not the most powerful base engine amongst all of these compact SUVs, but it does have a little bit more power than the engine that you get in the Nissan Rogue. And because it is naturally aspirated, response is immediate. And it's also pretty decent on fuel economy, especially considering that it's paired with a six-speed automatic. The naturally aspirated 2.5 liter engine is rated for 10.2 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 8.2 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. Back in 2017, when I drove the Mazda CX-5 with this engine, I averaged 9.9 .9 liters per 100 kilometers. The optional engine in the CX-5, which is what I have under the hood of this signature trim, is a turbocharged version of the 2.5 liter four cylinder. This engine can develop up to 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque when it's running on premium fuel. If you decide to use regular fuel, then it'll produce 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. Unfortunately, the Nissan Rogue doesn't have any sort of optional engine that is as powerful as the one in this CX-5. So, it's not really comparable against the Rogue. But this engine in the CX-5 makes it a very sporty crossover SUV. Turbo lag is minimal and it's got a lot of power and torque. And just like the base engine in the CX-5, this turbo engine is also paired with a six-speed automatic transmission. It doesn't make the engine the most fuel efficient in this class because you only have six gear ratios, but the transmission itself is very quick to respond and very smooth to change gears. With the turbocharged 2.5 liter engine, the CX-5 is rated for 10.8 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 8.7 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. I average 10.3 liters per 100 kilometers on a combined cycle. As for the driving dynamics of the Mazda CX-5, ever since it was introduced in 2017, this has still been the most sportiest of these compact crossover SUVs. Steering weight is really good around the corners, although it is a little bit on the heavy side when you're just maneuvering around the parking lot. The Rogue is better at that. But when you just want to have some fun around corners, even though this is a family SUV, the CX-5 is really rewarding. As well, if you get it with the all-wheel drive system and you find yourself on a slippery surface, say ice or snow, then it'll let you have a bit of fun when you put your foot down. As for the Nissan Rogue, this 2021 model year is only available with one engine. But for the 2022 model year, it will be available with a more powerful turbocharged 1.5 liter three cylinder. This engine produces 201 horsepower and 225 pound feet of torque. Under the hood of this Rogue is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that produces 181 horsepower and 181 pound feet of torque. That is a moderate bump compared to the last generation, but it is still on the low side compared to 
the Mazda CX-5 and the Honda CR-V and the Toyota RAV4. All of those have more powerful base engines. While on paper it's not the fastest or the most powerful, in reality it kind of does feel slow, but you're never going to be impeding anyone's progress behind you. And on highways, put your foot down a little bit and the CVT reacts immediately and the most that you're going to see is about 3000 RPMs, which is pretty normal for a vehicle this size and an engine of this displacement. Fuel economy has improved over the last generation. It is now rated at 7.2 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway and 9.2 liters per 100 kilometers in a city. Currently, I am at 8.6 liters per 100 kilometers, so you can definitely achieve those targets. This being a Nissan product, the transmission is, you guessed it, a CVT. Over the past few generations and iterations of this transmission, Nissan has improved it by quite a bit. It doesn't feel very elastic-y, like how the last one did. It reacts much more quickly, so if you put your foot down, it reacts immediately and gives you virtual gear shifts. If you're more gentle on the throttle, then it will behave more like a traditional CVT, as in it'll just rev up the engine to 2000, 2500 RPMs and hold it there until you accelerate to your desired speed. You can also put it into manual mode and use the paddle shifters, in which case you have a few virtual gears to choose from. And it's actually pretty responsive, even in that mode, for the upshifts at least. For the downshifts, not so much. But upshifts, yeah, they're pretty quick. Another improvement over the last generation is how this car handles. It's not on par with the Mazda CX-5. That is still the most sporty driving compact crossover on the market right now. But this one feels composed and the steering is pretty direct and very responsive. Sure, there isn't that much feel to it and it is on the light side but that just makes it pretty much perfect for everyday city driving. The interior of the Mazda CX-5 has a premium quality to it. In case you may or may not know, Mazda is trying to move up in the car market to become a premium brand like Acura. So even though the CX-5's interior hasn't changed all that much since 2017, it still looks and definitely feels very nice in here. Leather on the steering wheel, leather on the dashboard, a little bit of leather on the center console, and obviously Napa leather seats on this signature trim. There are a few cheap plastics like right here where the cup holders are on the lower portion of the center console and of course on the lower portion of the door panels. You do have to save some money here and there, but at least all these harder plastics are relegated to the lower portion of the cabin. Other than that, my only small complaints about the interior materials is just the use of gloss black plastic right here around the gear selector, but for the most part, you're not going to touch around here and you're not going to scratch it. The portion that you will touch often for the infotainment controls right here, just between the cup holders and the gear selector, it's flat plastic, so it's not gonna scratch up as easily as the gloss black plastic. In terms of interior space in the CX-5, up here in the front, six foot four of me has no issues. Legroom is fine, headroom, just fine. Sunroof is a smaller one. It's not a panoramic sunroof, but at least it has it. Let's check out the back seats. Sitting behind my driving position in the CX-5, as you can see, legroom is a bit of an issue. There is a nice indentation in the back of the front seat, but my legs still feel a little bit squished. Headroom though is just fine. The outermost seats are heated, but there are no separate climate controls in the back of the CX-5. And yeah, that's about it. It is a little bit dark feeling because it doesn't have the panoramic sunroof not available at all in the CX-5. So if you are a little bit claustrophobic, well, there's not really much that you can do about it. Where the Mazda CX-5 lags behind its competitors is cargo volume. With the rear seats up, 
it can only accommodate 875 liters of cargo, whereas its competitors offer over 1,000 liters of space. It's the same story when folding the back seats. The CX-5 only has enough room for 1,687 liters. The interior of the 2021 Nissan Rogue is a huge improvement over the last one. Now you get a full digital display in this platinum trim, a much larger infotainment system. You still have physical buttons for the climate and you get an interesting looking new shifter. There's also a lot of nice materials, again, in this top platinum trim. There's leather across the dashboard, leather right here on the center console where your knees would most likely rest up against, and obviously there's soft quilted leather on these seats. And these seats are fantastic. They are so comfortable, one of the best in the business. A couple of things I wanna highlight on this interior is firstly this sort of scratched looking material on the center console. It's not piano black, thankfully, so fingerprints and dust marks don't show up quite as badly as they do around the uh, climate controls because that still is piano black plastic. But this material, it's nice and I think it'll uh, stand up the test of time. A couple of things I don't like about this interior is the shifter and this drive mode selector. They look okay, which is fine, but as soon as you start touching it, it just feels cheap. Yeah, it doesn't really go all too well with the rest of this interior because it's really nice in here. Let's go to the back seats. Another big change to the 2021 Nissan Rogue is the amount of space for occupants inside. In the front, there's more legroom, and in the back, there's also more legroom. I am six foot four, so I am above average in height. But with this seat in my driving position, my knees don't feel squished up against the back of it. And there's still enough headroom for me. Granted, headroom is a little bit less compared to the last generation, but it's still enough. In the back, I also have heated seats in this platinum trim, USB-C and USB-A ports. And I have my own climate control. Yes, this is a three-zone climate control system, which is very rare in a car of this size. As well, the center pass-through is actually on the shallow side, so that's really nice if you have to sit in the middle. Behind the rear seats, the Nissan Rogue can accommodate 1,028 liters of cargo and 2,064 liters with the rear seats folded. These are specifications with the panoramic sunroof. Without it, the capacities increase by 5 and 34 liters respectively. Also, loading stuff from the side or just getting in and out of the back seats is quite easy thanks to the almost 90 degree opening rear doors. As for pricing, there is a roughly 3000 Canadian dollar difference between these top spec trimmed SUVs for the 2021 model years. $40,000 Canadian for the Nissan and $42,950 Canadian for the Mazda. But they both got price hikes for the 2022 model years. The Nissan Rogue is $2,000 Canadian dollars more expensive, while the Mazda CX-5 is only $400 Canadian dollars more expensive than the previous year's top spec trims. For the 2021 model year, 2021.5 here in Canada, the CX-5 receives the latest Mazda infotainment system. It is now displayed on a new 10 and a quarter inch screen that is controlled exclusively by a rotary knob on a center console. It is not a touch screen. The new infotainment system looks sharp, it's faster to respond to inputs, and is easy to navigate using the rotary knob. Other features on this Mazda CX-5 signature include satellite navigation, heated and ventilated front seats, heated steering wheel, though it's only at the nine and three positions, heated rear seats, a traditional sunroof, power liftgate, head-up display, Napa leather upholstery, surround view cameras, and a full suite of advanced driver and safety aids, which are actually standard across all trim levels. The Nissan Rogue can be similarly equipped, but there are a few differences. It has a touchscreen instead of a rotary controlled screen like in the Mazda, but the screen is only 9 inches in diameter. The infotainment system is updated with faster response times, but it looks similar to the previous generation infotainment system. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration, just like in the CX-5, but unlike the CX-5, 
the Rogue's infotainment system allows for wireless Apple CarPlay. Unfortunately, it does not allow for wireless Android Auto. As well, the Nissan Rogue Platinum has wireless phone charging, unlike the Mazda CX-5, and a larger panoramic sunroof. The 2022 Mazda CX-5 will receive wireless phone charging. However, the Nissan Rogue does not have the ventilated front seats like in the Mazda. Another difference is with the lane keep systems. The Rogue has a true lane centering system that will keep the car centered, while the CX-5 just gently brings you back into your lane if the car drifts to the edge of the lane. It won't actively keep the car centered like in the Nissan Rogue. So out of these two compact SUVs, which one is better? Well, the Nissan Rogue is a huge improvement over the previous generation. It's got a little bit more interior space, it drives a lot better, and it just feels much more refined. This Mazda CX-5, it feels pretty much the same as it did back in 2017, which is actually not a bad thing because this is still one of the best driving compact SUVs for the price that you're paying. Which one would I personally pick? Well, I'm still relatively young, so I still prefer a more enjoyable driving experience than having more interior space. So I'd still pick the Mazda CX-5, although it's by a very slim margin because the new Rogue is very, very good. But what would you pick? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to know more about either of these SUVs, I wrote more detailed reviews of them over on my website. You can find the link in the video description or click the pop-up banner up there. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely another SUV. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next video.